the town where the plant is located is a small town called Tar Hill in the middle of a very economically depressed area. Smithfield has mastered the art of picking and choosing a workforce that they can exploit. Initially from the local workforce, the poor whites, the poor black, they went through that workforce very quickly. Now they have to bus their workers all the way from Bentsville, South Carolina to Clinton, North Carolina. You have to draw a circle 100 miles in diameter and, and that's where all your workers are coming from. They have the same mentality towards workers as they do towards the hogs. You know, the hog, they don't really have to worry about their comfort because they're temporary, they're gonna be killed. And they have the same viewpoint to the worker. We don't worry about the longevity of the worker because to them, everything has an end. I mean, you got 2,000 hogs an hour going through. Employees, because they're handling these guts so much, they get infection in their fingernails, and all their fingernails separate from their fingers, you know. You're covered with blood, feces, urine. It's easy to get hurt down there. When you're doing that same movement for that same piece of the hog, then it's nonstop, you know. Basically, you treat it as a human machine. You have people that can't afford to leave from out there. Smithfield knows this and that's what they hold over you. A hundred years ago, when Upton Sinclair wrote The Jungle, there was a beef trust that wielded enormous power. Immigrants from Eastern Europe were being abused in the absence of any kind of government regulation. There were horrible, disfiguring injuries and even deaths Things got better. They slowly got better. Teddy Roosevelt took on the Beef Trust. Labor unions slowly organized meatpacking workers and turned it into one of the best industrial jobs in the United States. By the 1950s, to be a meatpacking worker was like being an auto worker. It was a good wage, good benefits, pension. And then what happened? Well, the meatpacking companies got bigger in order to serve the needs of the fast food industry, which was its biggest uh, customer. Some of the meatpacking companies, like IBP, borrowed the same sort of labor practices in the fast food industry, cutting wages, making sure there were no unions, speeding up production, and having the worker do the same task again and again and again. And meatpacking is now one of the most dangerous jobs in the United States. The meatpacking industry also recruited a new set of immigrants, illegal immigrants and recent immigrants from Mexico. 